How I choose a location for beach fishing. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne, and in today's video, I'm going to explain the process that I go through in deciding where I'm going to go beach fishing on a particular day. I'm going to explain all of that. Also, I've got a great tip to share with you, regardless of what type of fishing you're doing. I'll be going through the bait that I'm using and just explaining, explaining everything that I'm thinking when I'm down on the beach. And if you're enjoying this content, make sure that you like and subscribe because it costs nothing and it really helps my channel. So I'm keen to get into it, so we'll head on down the beach. So I've come down to one of my local beaches today. Really only want to fish for about an hour. I caught some yabbies only a little while ago. I got about 20 yabbies in about seven minutes. I'm only fishing with yabbies or nippers. Uh, now one important thing, just before I left to come down here, I was doing some whippersnipping at home and I got some petrol on my fingers. I thought, hang on, you know, sure my fingers had dried, but the last thing I want is any kind of scent, especially petrol or anything on my fingers when I'm putting my bait on, because in a previous video that I did on burleying, I did some research into the sense of smell of fish. Now dogs' sense of smell is up to 10,000 times greater than our sense of smell which is incredible but fish can smell things in parts per million so I gave my hands a thorough wash and not only that I've grabbed a bit of weed while I'm walking down the beach I'm just gonna rub my fingers through this just to get get rid of any smells that you know even though I wash my hands I just want to make sure that I've got a oceany smell rather than any chance of any tiny little bits of petrol or whatever just so that I don't have any um, anything that will turn fish away. Because even that tiniest thing, fish could come up to eat the bait and think, hey, something's not right. So I don't want to um, have any trouble with that. Also, I pre-rigged my line at home because I'm just going to fish for an hour and I just want to have the maximum time in the water. And I'm using a two-hook rig. I could use one hook, but I figure... Um, See, that guy's got a decent nipper on him. I wouldn't mind leaving that nipper on because I think it'd be a good, good attractor, but trying to put the yabby on with the nipper on, I'm, pro I'm definitely going to get bitten if I leave that nipper on. So I'm just going to have to take it off. And now I'm going to whack the yabby on. I'll put it through his rear end. Thread it up his body like a worm. It's a bit wriggly. My hands are a little bit slippery too. So I'm going to whack him on like that, put a half hitch around the top, then I'm going to get another one for my other hook. This, oh. this one's got a big nipper as well. I've been bitten a few times by these and they will draw blood when they're that size. And uh, they do sting so I'm not going to risk it. I'll put this guy on. Same thing. Now before I cast my line out, I just want to have a quick chat about how I came to the conclusion to fish where I'm fishing now. Now, the stretch of coast, coast where I live, I'm really familiar with every beach, which way it faces, where the rocks are. It was the same when I was in Sydney, so when I look at the conditions, I know how strong the wind is, how big the waves are, which direction the waves are coming from. So that's going to influence me in where I can possibly fish. Also, at the moment, it's dead low tide. And just down the beach, there's some really quite big waves. There's still some decent waves coming in. You can see there's a decent set coming in right now. If I was to fish in this wind in the middle of the beach at low tide, I'd really struggle to find anywhere to fish. So because the wind is from the north and the swell is from the north, I knew I'll need to pick a spot that's at the northern end of a beach where I'm going to have the northeast wind at my back. So I'm actually on a beach called Tabari Beach on the south coast. I've done a number of my videos here, but the only reason I came here today is because of the wind and the swell direction. 
and I'm actually tucked up right in that corner end of the beach. You can see the rocks just over here and where the waves kind of finish at the end of the beach there's a nice bit of a channel, some green water. I'm going to be casting my bait just beyond the white, just beyond the white water into this channel. Also, the way it's set up today, all of the water has been washed down to the end of the beach, so any potential food is going to be in this bit here. And when it hits the rocks, it can't go any further. It's actually got to, um, all the water coming here, down here has actually got to funnel out there. So thankfully, because it's low tide, I'm going to walk out up to my knees maybe because if I stood on the beach here I may struggle to get where I want to get with my bait so it's no big deal I'm going to walk out to knee deep then I'll be able to lob my bait just behind where the waves break into that nice swirly bit there. There's also a small channel to my right as well and it has some potential. There's a little bit of green water just here and I know that if I walk out onto this sandbar, I'll be able to flick into that little channel. So when I was thinking about where I could go fishing today, I was really limited to a few beaches because of the way the situation is. It would have been the same in Sydney, I would have had to think. Um, for example, Long Reef Beach would have been, under these conditions, would have been a good choice because it's protected from the north wind and the north swell. But I think about that every time I go fishing, you know, where it's going to be a reasonably protected spot, especially if there's big waves. So I think I've got a pretty good chance of catching some fish here. So enough talking. <laughs> got to get my line out. Okay, so I've walked out a little bit. I know I can get in the zone from here. I'm already a little bit wet. <laughs> Water's quite warm, actually. Now, I'm just going to see where my bait lands. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I've just landed to the left of where the waves break. There's a little bit of turbulence there. What I'm hoping, because the only bait that I have with me today is the nippers, so really my target species are whiting and brim. Although I've caught some good trevally on nippers before. So we'll just see what happens. If I don't get any bites in this particular location, I am going to tr move around a little bit until I can hopefully get some uh, get some bites. See if I can get a couple of nibbles from some whiting just in here. Because often you get them right in the corner. At least it's not rough over here. And I can see if I'm going to get a nibble in there. Could be some whiting sniffing around in there. Right, maybe even a brim. It's not very deep. So my options are. I'm just fishing close to the rocks here. There's a little bit of wash. Just going to see if there's anything sniffing around there. Otherwise, I can put a bigger cast in further out into where the water is washing down from the rest of the beach in this direction, where the waves are draining off the big sandbar down there. My previous cast, I lost my bait. I had a couple of wax, but I didn't hook fish. There's always the anticipation of hooking something nice and there's always the unexpected whenever you're fishing. nibbles just yet. I 
I do have the double yabby bait on. I call them yabbies because that's just what I'm used to. We always used to call them that when I was a kid. That's what my, my father called them. Okay, well, I'm not getting any nibbles yet, so I may pull in and cast out in a slightly different spot, I think. You've got to be a little bit careful with this bait because it's not the most robust bait. Winding it in slowly just in case something grabs it on the way in. But not really. So, alright. Still got my bait, that's okay. I will cast that out a bit further. See if it makes any difference. I keep getting wet from these waves. Oh well. So I've just gone a little bit further out this time, just to see if anything's going to have a go out there. And hopefully, oops, hopefully my bait stayed on. Oops, I had a bite. Oh, darn it. Definitely had a bite then, that's promising. got any bait left. Probably going to have to wind it in. But it didn't take too long to get a bite out there. So I think I'll have to cast out there again. Yep. Better check my bait. And have another go. Top bait is gone, so I'll just rebait. My bottom bait's okay, so I'll leave him there. <coughs> I lost my top bait. Had a reasonable bite then that I failed to connect, so it's going to whack another, another, another nipper on my top bait. I put in a slightly longer cast, and I didn't get any bites in close. So I threw out a bit further and had a bite pretty quickly. So I'm going to do the same thing again now that I had a bite casting further out. Come on, Mr. Fish. I want to catch some fish for dinner. It's going to want to, I just want to get a little bit further out. But these waves are nailing me. Ooh. Oh, well, have it a go. Here we go. I'm going to catch a fish this time. I've landed on the sand pretty I am getting a bite. Got him this time. Yep. Oh, have I still got him? Yeah, I still got him. Whatever it is. It feels strange. You know what was happening then? It wasn't coming in because my drag was fully working. <laughs> I could feel my... I thought, I thought, it's coming in too easy. What have I got? It's a mystery fish. Yeah, I was winding. I thought, man, this is coming in too easy. But my drag was doing its job. It's actually got a bit of fight in it, so let's just see what this thing is.
Oh, no wonder it's pulling hard. It's actually two fish. <laughs> now the water's drawing back with this, these waves. It's going to um, get them in now. It should be all right. No wonder it was hard to pull in. It's still hard to pull in. This little light beach rod is um, doing a lot of work. Now these are not massive fish, but when you have two on at once, oh! Yeah, when you have two on at once, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Okay, here we go. Oh, they're pulling hard. They don't want to. They don't want to come in. Look at this. Here we go. Whoa! Look at that. Now they are two trevally. That's exactly, they bit exactly the same as the previous bite that I had. I'm not sure what the legal limit is for trevally. These are not that long. These, these guys are probably, probably 10, they're probably 30 centimetres. But you know, they have some beautiful little fillets, these guys, but um, they obviously like nippers. They call these, in, in Western Australia, they call these skippy. So I'm going to let these guys go, actually, and see if there's any bigger skippy out there. Beautiful little fish, they'd actually be delicious. So I think I'm going to um, toss out in the same location because that happened straight away as soon as I landed in. My boat actually was probably only about five metres out from the rocks. I was on the sand just out from the rocks. But it's a good little spot. <laughs> I think I might have gone a little bit close, too close to the rocks then, but... Uh-oh, this wave is going to nail me! Woo! thrown out in the same spot again with the yabbies. It feels like another trevally, but I just got slammed by a wave. And I wear a little mic on my chest, but it got soaked and it's just died, unfortunately. So that's why it sounds different, you can tell why. But it's working where I'm fishing in the corner of the beach here. I'm getting bites every cast now. Hopefully this one's big enough. I think, what have I got? Two, I've got two fish again. Another double whammy. Well, I'm, I'm enjoying this. So this time, this time I've got two brim. Previous cast, I had two trevally. This one is obviously big enough to eat. He's a good size for eating that guy. This guy is too small. But two casts and a double hookup on different species each cast. So it's awesome. So I'm going to keep this fella. I'm just going to rebait. And like I mentioned, I've just ruined my mic in the salt water because a wave smashed me in the face. But I want to get another bait out there really quick.
I've had a great time down here having a fish. I'm a little bit wet, but I've had two double hookups. I've probably only had a line in the water for about 35 minutes, maybe six casts. I've had a bite nearly every cast. Got two Trevally, they were both legal size, but I let them go. And then I got two Brim, but really cool. So make sure you like and subscribe, and I will be hopefully doing another video very soon and making the most of this awesome weather. And this is such an epic time of the year for beach fishing. So I'm keen to be doing a lot of it. See you soon.